Hey everyone, I'm Katherine Middleton, and I'm really excited to be talking to you all about React server-side rendering. But before I dive into server-side rendering, let me show you a graph that I found to be very relatable. So here is a graph that represents the time on a computer spent when you first visit a web page. And the green represents waiting for the website to load, and the red represents waiting for the advertisements on the web page to load. So in the meantime, while the advertisements are loading, sometimes it just still won't display your content and it becomes really frustrating. So show of hands if you've ever experienced this scenario before. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a very annoying process from a user perspective. So React server-side rendering can help solve this issue. And I'm going to show you all how. So why is this happening? Why are certain web pages so slow to initially load and just display some simple content? There could be different reasons, but one of them is the HTML file is being how the HTML file is being rendered. And so when I use this, the term rendering, I want you to think of where is the HTML file being created? And there's two different ways. There's client-side rendering, and there's also, you guessed it, server-side rendering. So first, client-side rendering. This is where the HTML is being created in the browser by JavaScript. So here is the file that is being returned from the server, and it's very small. You can see that there's a single div tag, so when that bundle, the public slash bundle JS, loads, it builds up that div tag based on that ID that you specify. So all that work of generating that HTML file when you first land on this web page is being done and produced by, that, by the client as it's populating the DOM. So then there's server-side rendering, and this is where the HTML is being created on the server. So when the server receives a request, it renders the required components into an HTML string, and it sends a response to the client, which is what you're seeing here. So this is the response that the server-side is sending to the client. So based on client-side and rendering, uh, server-side rendering, who can predict which one would be faster at rendering? Would it be client-side or server-side? Server-side. Good answer. That is correct. So server-side is faster at the initial page load. So why is it faster? Since the server is rendering the HTML file, all that information is already there when it comes back to the client. The user doesn't have to wait for the JavaScript files to load in order to see content on the page. Without server-side rendering, it might take a while for the page to load, especially if the user is on a slow connection, which I'm going to demonstrate later throughout my presentation. It also shows something even on old and unsupportive browsers, which is, as you may know, it's really difficult for JavaScript to behave the same across all browsers and, uh, and devices. With server-side rendering, it makes sure that JavaScript runs correctly across all browsers and devices and it gives overall a better user experience. It's also, server-side rendering is also great at search engine optimization, SEO. So it's more reliable for metadata and linking and getting all those keywords. Since the server is po already populating that HTML file, it's easier for uh, within the, with Google to allow users to, to find your site more easily since the HTML file is already being populated. And then there's also, it's easier to test. Because all that information is already there in that HTML file, you can just test that file itself. Versus if you were to create um, a client-side rendering, you would have to create a new browser, send a request to the server, and then when it comes back, you would have to call the bundle.js file, and then it would load that div tag. So how can I implement this in my React application? So first, you want to obtain the data needed to render the initial loading page. So this is all the content that's being displayed on your current uh, web, web page. Then you'll need to render the HTML using this data, and we're going to be rendering it to a string to send it back to the client. So the third is package the HTML and send it back to the client side. So how does a server know when it's the initial state? and when to package the HTML with the initial data. We're going to use Redux. So when using Redux uh, server rendering, we need to know when it's the first time the client lands on the site. 
So this can be done using Redux, so the server must send, send the state of our application along in our response so that the client knows that it's used as the initial state. So Redux's only job on the server side is to provide the initial state of our application. So now I'm going to show you a demo. And it's a simple portfolio site using React. And I've created it, one using client-side uh, rendering and the other server-side rendering. So here's the site. It's just a basic uh, portfolio page. And if you scroll down, there's a couple sections and a contact me form. So we have two different uh, sections here. The server, so this is the server-side rendering. And then we have the client-side rendering. And I'm going to refresh these pages while the cache is disabled to show you how fast these pages will load on the initial page load. And we'll look at the time and see those differences. So I'm going to refresh the client and refresh the server. And we'll take a look and see. So if you look at the server, it was 1.86 seconds versus the client was 2.39 seconds. So the server was slightly faster, but we, are, we do have really high speed internet connection right now. And let's say that we are walking to the subway and we just really need to find content of a concert we're going to. Uh, and which, in this situation, server-side rendering would be a lot more optimal because we'll be able to see that content a lot faster. So I'm going to have this be in a regular 3G connection for server-side as well as the client. And let's refresh the page and see what happens. So client side and server side. So server, we're already getting content, whereas client, it's still loading. So we already see this information here versus client side. It's just starting to load. So you can see that there's a big difference between the two, just visually as a user. And if we look at the time, the server took 11.94 seconds on a good three regular 3G connection versus client side, which took 26.15 26 seconds. Great. So now that I've demonstrated the different load times for client side rendering versus server side rendering, I want to show you what's going on behind the scenes. So here is my application uh, repository where I am currently in my server folder, which is crazy because I'm actually installing and requiring React where I'm also requiring Express. So we have React and we also have render to string. So this is where uh, we're going to be using this method later to render our HTML file to a string. And we also have create store, provider, and reducer. So this is where we're going to tell the client that this is our initial payload, page load using Redux. So first, we're going to use this handle render method. And we're going to have this preloaded state. And this is taking all of our information, the projects, project data, uh, and sidebar info, just some basic content. And we want to create a fresh new Redux store in the instance of every request. So we're going to be passing that in, creating the store with our reducer. And then we're going to render the React component to a string. So here's our HTML, and we're calling this render to string method that we imported up here from our React DOM slash server. And you can think of this method. So it's, like, it's very similar to React DOM dot render. So if you remember, in the, if we're in our browser application, and we look at our app, or sorry, our index, we have React DOM dot render, and we pass in these values, and we specify which ID to populate the HTML in. So if we look back at our server, here, this is, we're doing the same thing. We're passing in our page, con page container, and as well as our store. Then we're going to grab the initial state from our Redux store, by store.getState, and send the rendered page back to the client. So before sending it, we're going to render this full page which is this method right here. And it takes our HTML in that preloaded state that we saw up here. And this is the template of the HTML file that we're returning back to the client. 
And here is the HTML that we've rendered previously as a string. And you can see it's being added to our div ID app tag right here. And if we look back to our server code, here's that div ID app. And you can see here all of the HTML being populated within that div tag. And then we also need to let it know the preloaded state, all that data that's necessary to load before uh, it sends it back to the client. So here's our preloaded state, and we go back to our HTML file, and we can see that information being populated right here with all our content and information that's on the state. And the last thing that we need to do is in, within Redux, we want to check to see if a uh, window has this preloaded state on it. And if it does, then we know to uh, tell it that the state is the preloaded state. Awesome. So that demo concludes my talk. And I definitely had a lot of fun using React server-side rendering, especially knowing I could use React in the same application as Express. Like, it was, it was a lot of fun exploring it. And I really encourage you all to do the same, especially if you want a faster page load and just better SEO optimization so more users can find your page. And yeah, thank you so much for listening.